Hi guys, uh, I thought tonight we'd have a practice session at making a takedown bucksaw uh, just using some very minimal tools and uh, some pieces of wood that uh, you know when we're actually out in the field we would just use found sticks and branches but I uh, thought this would be a, a good way to, uh, to practice doing it. So stay tuned! Okay, so here's what we've got. Um, just a blade um, that would be for a, a bow saw. And you can see it's quite flexible. Uh, so the idea is going to be to build a frame that has some tension outwards uh, so that it holds us rigidly and allows a, a sawing action. And we're going to do this using a couple of uh, little bolts that will put in, into the end of them, a um, little knife and a uh, Swiss Army knife with a saw blade and a uh, couple of pieces of wood and to do the final tension we've got a piece of string. So uh, as we progress I'll, uh, I'll show you what we're, what we're trying to do. Okay so hopefully you can see this okay. I'm just going to quickly draw what we're trying to do. So here we've got the saw blade and in the end of, each, of the saw blade there's a, a hole at each end and that's where we'll put those two little bolts and uh, then one piece of wood will uh, come on this side of the bolt and sort of be up in that direction another piece of wood the same way here and it, what, what we'll do is saw a slit in the wood so that the, uh, the saw blade will fit in and the bolt here will uh, prevent the the saw from pushing outward so the the uh, uh, th this piece of wood can exert an outward force this way and this piece of wood can exert a piece of uh, can exert an outwards force that way and the bolt will stop it from uh, sliding off the end of the saw blade then what we're going to do is in the middle here I'm going to sort of carve out a notch in uh, in the piece of wood here and we'll have another piece of wood that fits it and to finish things off I guess I'll carve a, a little notch here and from here we'll have the piece of rope going back and forth so the, the rope is going to uh, have tension coming in this direction and I'll show you the, the trick to do that um, but as the rope pulls inwards we have essentially a fulcrum here so if ropes pulling this way this rigid piece of wood here wants to tip outwards like that and the same thing here but in the opposite direction as the rope pulls this way the piece of wood here because of the fulcrum in the middle wants to do this because we have the bolts here the these pieces of wood really can't come out and that tension gets uh, transferred to the saw blade and should uh, pull it outwards like in a direction like this and make this nice and rigid. So that's what we're trying to achieve and I'll spend a few minutes uh, carving the pieces of wood to, to fit this and then maybe we'll give it a try on a piece of maple that I've got here. Okay so this first piece of wood here I've uh, mark the center and I'm just going to cut them in half and that's going to make the uh, the upright pieces uh, for our buck saw frame. So we'll just use my little Swiss Army knife. And, you know this doesn't have to be exceptionally precise or anything. two pieces that are essentially going to uh, to do something like that. Okay so the next step is to cut a slit in each of these two pieces of wood that uh, that will allow 
the saw blade to fit inside and you know rest somewhere up in in, in here. So essentially two slits, oh maybe about an inch deep. And uh, we'll be inserting the, uh, the saw blade into them. So we'll come back when I've done that. Okay, so I've cut the, uh, the slits in these pieces of wood, one on each side. And here I've attached the, uh, the screw and nut, or bolt and nut. Um, so now these pieces of wood cannot uh, fall off off the ends of the uh, of the blade. I've also marked approximately the center of uh, each of these vertical pieces and that's where I'll make that uh, sort of uh, pilot hole or, or gouge kind of thing uh, that will accept this middle piece. And this middle piece, what I did is sort of laid him uh, roughly on the center of uh, of this piece here and mark the line roughly on the center line of, of this of this guy and that's where I'll cut him and then I'll sharpen uh, the ends down uh, <laughs> sharpen the ends down to uh, to make a point here so the pointy bit will go into the hole here and same on that side and uh, then we'll be ready to prepare things for the uh, for the string so this is taking shape pretty quickly. This whole thing is uh, probably taking me two or three minutes to do. Okay, so I've cut this um, middle strut or middle piece of wood roughly to length, and yeah, I don't think you need to be terribly uh, fanatical about being precise with this. Um, so this will kind of go in here, and the next step will be to uh, sharpen or taper down each of the ends to uh, a point that will. Um, sort of fit into a little hole that I'll gouge uh, into into each of these uh, vertical pieces. Um, so to do that, I'll uh, use this uh, larger knife. And actually, I made this uh, knife a couple years ago. Um, basically, it's a it's a replica of another knife. That I I really like the uh, the form that fits the knife uh, the hand nicely and. There's a nice thumb ramp and jimping and stuff like that that I really like. But the other knife was made out of really inferior steel. And uh, so I thought I'd, I'd make a more functional uh, version of it. And yeah, it's uh, served well. So we'll just use this to just uh, uh, taper down the ends to uh, something resembling a, a bit of a point. And again, I'm not going to be too... Uh, fanatical about being precise with this. Just be throwing chips everywhere. So perhaps I'll come back, uh, you see kind of the idea here. Uh, perhaps I'll come back when I've done both ends and then we'll start the uh, uh, carving the holes that the that, uh, that this stick will uh, mate into. Okay, so in probably less than two minutes we've got uh, a point on each end of the stick and now what we want to do is uh, gouge out a hole that will uh, that will accept the point and what I'll do is just sort of mark a little cross where that's going to go in on each on each side And again, this doesn't have to be you know, extremely accurate. And these uh, holes, I don't think, need to be terribly deep. They just have to uh, be deep enough that, uh, that this will be seated so that it, it won't pop out as we're, we're sawing. So to do this, essentially, I'm just going to uh, put the knife blade on the X and keeping the fingers well out of the way. use the, uh, the knife to start drilling in. So I'll spend another uh, minute or so doing this and we'll come back when it's done. So we've got the point on each end finished, the hole in each vertical piece finished, and they 
seem to mate up uh, rather nicely. So we're ready to go on to the next stage, which basically is just carving a little notch um, on the back end of uh, each of these verticals, uh, just so that this piece of rope here can go around and uh, be in sort of a bit of a groove so that it'll stay steady in one spot and it won't be able to slide up or down. Um, so really that should just uh, take a moment or so. Really I'll just uh, mark a rough line maybe an inch or so down from the uh, from the end of the uh, wood. I'll just, uh, just carve out a, a very rough uh, guideline and uh, we'll come back and I'll uh, <laughs> attach the rope and we'll show you how we tension this up. Okay, so now I've got a, um, a small notch carved out in, in each of these vertical pieces of wood. And uh, now we're basically ready to put everything together. So what I've done is uh, lay this piece of rope out um, underneath. So essentially we're going to form a loop around these two verticals and pull pull the, uh, the top bits together. So the nice thing here though is that with this little trick that we're going to use I don't have to worry to make uh, make this knot very tight or anything. It's just uh, I'll get it snug. Uh, not even all that snug. Slightly snug just for convenience. And I'll just use a, uh, um, a sheet bend to uh, to tighten or to, to tie this. And the reason for the sheet bend is it will be relatively easy to undo once we uh, once we get done. So with the sheet bend I'm just uh, forming a, a loop here coming up the inside of the loop wrapping around and coming through underneath himself. And we can link to uh, a uh, an, a sheet bend uh, on YouTube that's uh, specific to how to tie the sheet then. So more or less that's it. I guess I've got some uh, extra uh, bits of wine. Uh, I'll just uh, sort of roughly coil this up for, for the moment. And then we'll get on to the, uh, the trick for how to actually tension this whole thing. And the trick is, insert something in between the two bits of rope. And the thing that you insert should be long enough that the end of it will rest here. This may be a little on the short side, but reasonable for a demonstration purpose. And I'm just going to twist it. And as I put twists in this rope, the rope is going to want to shorten and that puts the inwards tension on the ends of uh, on the ends of those two sticks. And by putting inwards tension here, uh, we're putting outwards tension on the blade and uh, the, the more I do this, the, the more tension we'll have. 
And here's the really nice thing about it. The question is, you know, how do I hold this in place when we're done? And the answer is it really is going to uh, hold himself. This is actually putting so much tension on these little sticks here that they're actually bending. <laughs> so I guess that's more than enough tension. And uh, from here we can proceed to actually uh, try this out. And if you remember uh, at the beginning of the video we looked at how wibbly wobbly this is, this blade was. Well, it's not so wibbly wobbly now. So let's see if I can find a, a suitable piece of wood and uh, we'll see if we can actually do some sawing. Okay, rather than using a piece of maple I was thinking about, why don't we just use this old uh, 2x4. And I'm sort of perched precariously up on my bench. <laughs> just a position I've never been to actually saw uh, from. But uh, uh, maybe it, uh, it just probably gives a, a, a better angle for you to be able to see what we're doing here. So we'll see if we can get this uh, started. This might be a bit loud for a minute. Okay, well that worked. Made relatively short work of things, so yeah, I guess we can call that a, uh, successful, a successful trial. And uh, the nice thing is to take this down, to take it apart, all we have to do is remove this guy and just let him. Twist and the rope comes off, pieces come off. And we have a, a nice package. And you can use the rope to uh, bundle this up. This guy you can keep or discard because really any kind of stick will do. And you got yourself a nice uh, a nice little set and it's pretty quick to put together uh, to put back together uh, maybe let's time it and we'll see how, how long it takes me to uh, to reassemble this whole thing let's see about reassembling so there's one upright there's the second upright Guy backwards. <laughs> so we'll do that again. Now we've got the middle piece. Now we've got our string. Well, that's the basic assembly done right there. And we'll put some tension on the string. too crazy with the tension here. And we can call that done and reassemble. And that was about a minute and ten seconds. So not bad at all. And disassembling is much shorter than that. <laughs> More like ten seconds. There you have it. That's a uh, nice little practice run at a takedown, <laughs> a 
that I take down a buck saw. So the idea is uh, the next time I'm out in the woods, which will hopefully be um, in two weeks, maybe three weeks, uh, family day long weekend, planning on being up in the uh, Crown Land, sort of in, uh, in the Algonquin Park area. Um, and we'll just bring the blade and uh, we'll just find bits of wood uh, as we're out there and uh, yeah, very little weight to carry. Of course the blade would, would be in, it, in its sheath um, and pretty easy to, uh, to put this together. So we'll play with it out in the woods and uh, maybe do a, just a quick follow-up video with, uh, with how we do with it. So take care and thanks for watching. Well, hey guys, I just wanted to show you a quick little addendum to uh, to the work that we did um, earlier on the buck saw. Um, just two quick little things. Uh, one is a uh, I trimmed the end off these uh, these bolts so that they're they're flush to the uh, to the nut, and uh, used a little center center punch to uh, uh, to expand the the bolt so that uh, the, the nut is not going to work its way loose. So hopefully you can see that. But essentially the, the, uh, the gist of it is that I didn't want a, a long piece of bolt hanging out um, so we, we cut them off and made it so that this thing won't work its way loose at all. And the other little tweak that I made is uh, in the uh, the slit that we had cut in in these vertical pieces, um, I added a little hole on one side uh, so that when the blade fits in, it will kind of sit inside the piece of wood so that, uh, especially when there's tension on it, the blade won't accidentally uh, fall uh, down this way. Not easily, anyway, because the, uh, the the wood will be holding it. So I just wanted to show you that. Essentially, it, it's going to work identically to how we how we had it earlier with the with the center uh, piece. Of course, I did this on on both sides. So the the other one has a just sort of a rough hole there, and just the normal slit on the other side. So it uh, also fits. It's the, uh, the, the, the head of the bolt, and uh, the rest of it works as we had shown. So, just wanted to show you those two quick details. Everything else has uh, just been completely unchanged. So, hope you enjoyed it.